Just look around. Look around. The variety, not just of backgrounds, but of talent is extraordinary. And the notion that we wouldn't take advantage of that talent to advance our institutions and our community is absurd. The rich promise of the region's growing diversity must be tapped fully to achieve its economic, civic, and social potential. That is the mission of Commonwealth Compact. The Commonwealth Compact is a unique and innovative opportunity to harness the power of our diverse communities, recognizing that that power increases our competitive advantage in every aspect of our civic life. It's our economic imperative as well to make sure that all of our residents have the opportunity to play a role in our state economy including to women and minorities, to individuals with disabilities, to members of the GLBT community, to the immigrant communities as well. The project conducted a survey of local boards of directors, finding a preponderance of white males on corporate boards and nonprofits alike, a preponderance profoundly unrepresentative of the makeup of our community. So we put forward efforts like Commonwealth Compact because we know that the best way to a prosperous community and future is through broad opportunity, equality, and fair play. Its whole being is predicated upon understanding the historical context that has brought us to this place today. For 300 years, our economic and social prosperity in Massachusetts was inextricably linked with our openness to diversity and our reputation for tolerance and inclusion. Out of 60 of the most prominent innovations in Massachusetts history, well over a third had women, immigrants, and minorities as prime movers. Lucy Stone and Susan B. Anthony led the women's suffrage movement. David Walker and his Walker's Appeal helped inspire the abolition movement. There were more black lawyers in Boston than almost any other northern city. In 1903, W.E.B. Du Bois wrote of Boston, it is the Negro's Mecca the heart of his political and educational future. Alexander Graham Bell, a Scottish immigrant, after witnessing a statehouse rally against the Ku Klux Klan, he wrote home to his father that Boston was the place he wanted to make his home. But by the mid-1900s, things had changed. New England's steady decline in traditional manufacturing, replaced by electronics, reinvigorated the economy but prospered in the suburbs, not in the cities, left urban breeding grounds for economic competition and cultural conflict. These trends culminated in the unconstitutional segregation of the Boston public schools, symbolized by a single photo. That single image indelibly branded Boston as a racist city. As Washington Post columnist Michael Wilbon said during the discussion of Kevin Garnett's trade to the Boston Celtics, you have this history of bigotry against African-American people in Boston, and black players know it, and you do not want to go voluntarily to Boston. And not just black people, but people of color. This conversation, he says, has been going on forever. And indeed, that conversation does go on. Ask virtually any young professional of color in our community. Ask him or her what their friends said about the possibility of moving to Boston. It is a negative brand which persists. That's why we're here today. The Commonwealth Compact will hold our collective feet to the fire through benchmarks and standards that will help drive progress across our state. You gathered here today on this occasion to release the first annual report of the Commonwealth Compact Benchmark Initiative, stepping up, managing diversity, and challenging times. How many persons of color and women are on your board of directors? Is your workforce diverse, and do the persons of color and women advance at rates comparable to white males? Does your customer base reflect the community? What share of the business you do with vendors and suppliers goes to minority and women-owned firms? Such questions are among the 25 benchmarks that all these organizations will use to help drive success.
there are many opportunities for increasing the diversity in leadership among the signers. There are about 1,500 positions on leadership teams and more than 2,000 board positions. But we found that 23% of companies and organizations had no person of color on their leadership team, and 11% had none on their governing board. To be competitive, our economy and our culture will need to be diverse, tolerant, and inclusive, from the entry level of our workforce to our senior management and boards of directors. The Commonwealth Compact could not come at a better time. There is a new reality here that our city and state should now be seen as a welcoming place. And I want people from all walks of life throughout the country and the world to understand the advantages of living in this great state of Massachusetts. I want to encourage everyone, especially our friends in the private sector, to be part of this compact. We have set an audacious and an important goal. You are going to make it happen. It's not about us, it's about us. And I am ready to march. And I hope you are too.